Greetings, happy Thursday. It's Jen at Polk County Public Libraries. And for our program this week, I'm going to show you how to make edible terrariums. So this is just a fun snack that you can do if you wanna do something fun. And I'm going to make mine with six, um, six kind of different layers or ingredients, but you can make yours however you like. Um, you will need it's fun if you get a clear container to do it in because then you can see all your layers. So I'm not really hungry right now, so I picked a tiny little clear container, but you could get a bigger clear jar or clear cup to put yours in. And then you will have your different ingredients you're going to layer in the jar, and then you'll probably need a spoon to eat it with. So I actually learned a lot about how to make a real terrarium while doing this. So maybe we will do that sometime in the future. So for a real terrarium, the first layer that you want to put on the bottom is a charcoal layer. So that is to absorb the unpleasant odors um, that you might get in a traditional terrarium and to keep it healthy and free of mold and mildew. So to make it really authentic, we're going to add a little charcoal layer in ours. So I wanted to get chocolate sprinkles to put in the bottom of mine, but I could not find it at any of the stores I went to. So, I'm just going to use red sprinkles <laughs> for my charcoal layer. But if you found black or uh, darker color sprinkles, that might look a little more authentic if you're really trying to make it look like dirt in a real terrarium. So, it just depends on how you want yours to look. You might want it to look more real. You might want it to look more colorful. So, for our next layer, we want something that's kind of like the gravel or the pebbles, little rocks that you would put in your terrarium. Uh, so if you're doing a real terrarium with a plant, um, you put those in so that the water can drain and so that the plant's roots aren't sitting in water. Uh, so there are a lot of different things you could use for this, but you wanna use something that uh, is bigger so that water could get through it, like jelly beans if you're going for a colorful terrarium. If you wanted it to be more true to nature, you could use some kind of brown candy like chocolate chips, or they even make those like chocolate fake rocks. Uh, you could also use some kind of like sugary cereal. And I'm going to use M&Ms. So just any kind of candy that has bigger pieces. So the charcoal, you want it to be smaller pieces like sprinkles. And then the rock layer would be your bigger pieces. All right, and of course, in every terrarium, you need potting soil. So for our potting soil, we are going to crush some Oreos. I actually got a little thing of mini Oreos, and maybe I should have crushed them before I started this video, but you can put them in a Ziploc bag, and you can use your hands to crush them. If you're in your kitchen, you could use a rolling pin or any kind of hard object, but make sure to be careful and to have an adult help you. Okay. <laughs> Almost got them all crushed. All right, so this is our stand in for potting soil. Mine's a little chunky, but that's okay. You might also want to use a tablecloth, unlike me. All right, and there's my potting soil. Um, also in terrariums, sometimes there is a layer of moss on top. Uh, so the moss can store lots of water, which can help your plant in a real terrarium. So for our moss, we're going to use graham crackers. We're also going to crush these up like we did the Oreos. And if you want it to look really authentic, I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but we're going to experiment. Add some green food coloring, and I just got a tip to crush these before I add the green food coloring. That seems to make sense. Good tip, good tip. These are a little easier to crush than the Oreos.
course, you want to make sure you have strong Ziploc bags that don't get holes in them. And or have a tablecloth. All right, let's see how this goes. Any other tips? <laughs> All right. Put some green food coloring in there. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, it's turning green. It's looking like moss. I might add a little bit more. So my uh, terrarium here is kind of half authentic, half colorful. You could do that too, or you could choose to go all, all one way. Cool. I just remembered something. So our next layer is going to be your plant. So basically you want to find some kind of green candy, or you could, if you're really um, talented, you could get some green fondant to make little plants. I bought some Sour Patch straws and I took the green ones and I'm just going to make like some little succulents. So I'm going to go ahead and stick those in the jar before our moss so that they stay in there better so that the moss covers up like where the roots would be if these were real plants. I'll stick some of my little succulent candy straw in there and then I will pour the moss over the roots of those. And this is kind of messy. Tablecloth would have been a good idea. All right. Well, that one just doesn't like it. That one can go away. All right. So here you have a beautiful terrarium. And even when you have plants in your terrarium, Sometimes you wanna add something else fun. You might wanna add a little fairy or a little gnome or a crystal. So I wanted to, we wanna make this completely edible so you can eat the whole thing. So at the store, they also sell these fun little icing decorations. And since, you know, there's like a month and a half till Halloween, they are selling these. So I'm gonna add a little pumpkin and a little ghost to my terrarium. And now I have a delicious, very sugary snack to enjoy this afternoon. I hope you guys have fun.